Hello everyone, this is Amber with Story Chasing, and today is another segment of Workshop Wednesdays. Now last week I showed you my income, this week we're actually going to go into expenses. Now these are expenses related to our veen, and they are my monthly averages. So yes, I'm going to open up my books, I'm going to show you what my monthly budget is, and all of the expenses that I have every single month. Some of these expenses are annual and some of them are monthly, but what I've done is I've gone through my budget and I've done just an average of what the costs are every single month. So one of the things that you'll actually want to know before you put your budget together is how you travel. Now you may not know that just yet, but we'll get into the specifics of what I'm talking about as we get further into the video. In order to keep this video really short, I have put together a free mini course on budgeting all of my tips on how I save money and how I slash my budget to the bare bones so that I have a little bit of extra money to play with every single month or specific times of the year when I get together with more friends and family. So if you want to sign up for that free mini course, look in the description box of this video and click on the link. You can get signed up for that free mini course. Another question that I've gotten from my videos is people have asked me if I'm wealthy and that's how I'm able to RV. That simply is just not the case, and I did address this in one of my other videos about how I make money on the road. So that said, I want you to understand that RVing and traveling full-time can actually be fairly inexpensive and less expensive than living in your traditional sticks and bricks home. Now, it just really depends on every single person, but you can get your budget to a place where you can travel full-time. Now, a lot of people also say that you should get out of debt before you go into traveling full time. I think it's great to do that. I don't think it's necessary though. The reason why I say that is because if you already have an income coming in on a monthly basis and that money is going to provide a living for you to pay all of your expenses, if it's cheaper for you to RV than being in a sticks and bricks home, I don't see why you can't just apply that income to RVing and traveling full time. To me, there's really no difference. There's some things associated with just living in general that you should have, like an emergency fund set up and making sure that you are paying down your debt. But again, you can pay down your debt a lot quicker in some cases if you are RVing or traveling full time. And again, there's so many different variables though to that. So it's just my little disclaimer there. At the end of the day, what I guess I'm trying to say is that you are in full control of not only your income and your expenses, and how you live your life. So what I'm going to present to you is just a guideline so that you can see that someone who is living this life full time, what their monthly expenses are. So it kind of gives you an idea of maybe what you can budget. We're gonna get into the numbers now. So the first line item in my budget is fuel costs. I budget about $400 a month and that gets me about 1500 miles per month. Now, sometimes I don't go the full 1500 miles and sometimes I go over that. But what I like to do is I save that $400. Let's say I don't go the full 1500 miles or I don't use the full $400. I save that and carry it over to the next month so that if there's a time when I do go over, I have money carried over from the last month that helps me in the months that I'm going over my budget. Obviously fuel costs can vary greatly depending on what kind of a rig you have. If you have a class A versus a class B. If you have a class A which consumes more gas than maybe a class B van, then obviously in the class B van would consume less gas, so therefore your budget could be lower. The next item is RV insurance, and I pay $100 a month for this. Now I pay my insurance annually, so I get a little bit of a discount for paying it annually, but I still budget $100 every single month so that I can save that so that when my bill comes due, I have all the money ready to go to pay my annual bill. Now, my RV insurance is full-timers RV insurance. And I was actually surprised by this. I thought my insurance was gonna be really high because I do full-time and it's a van. But surprisingly, when I had my sticks and bricks home, I had a Nissan Rogue and it was about $65 a month. So this was only $35 a month more expensive to full-time in my RV. So the next line item is RV maintenance. I budget $100 also per month for this. Now I don't use $100 every single month, but I keep it in reserves for that time period when I will need it. The Heimer actually has a six year warranty on it. So I probably won't be at a point where I'm actually gonna have to start putting money into the RV for a little while, but there are costs that you have on a monthly, quarterly or annual basis that are maintenance, like changing your oil or 
changing tires when they get worn, or just washing your car every single month. So that comes out of my auto maintenance budget. The auto maintenance can also vary depending on what kind of a vehicle you have. If you have an RV that doesn't have a warranty and maybe you just bought it outright, you're probably gonna have to put more money into your auto maintenance budget for the times when you are going to need to make some changes on your RV and keep it road running. The next item is RV registration and that one is budgeted at $9 per month. Again, this will depend on what state you're domiciled in and where you have your RV registered. Mine just happens to be $9 per month or on an annual basis, it's just a little over $100. So again, I budget that on a monthly basis and I save that money so that when I have to pay it, it's all there for me. The next item I have budgeted is RV park rent or campgrounds. That's $100 per month. Now, if you've seen very many of my videos, you know that I don't typically stay in RV parks or campgrounds. I do try to find boondocking, dry camping, BLM land, national forest land, basically places that I can stay for free. Especially since purchasing the Heimer Class B van, I typically do not have to pay anything for RV parks and campgrounds because I can do more stealth camping and I can actually stay at friends and family's homes a little bit easier now than I did with my 26 foot RV. So having a smaller vehicle has really helped in that area of my budget and I've actually been able to decrease it. Now I say decrease it, decrease my actual expense. I still keep my budget at hundred dollars just in case. I've only had the Heimer active for three months yet. So I wasn't exactly sure like how much I would still be using that budget. So I just kept it there. There will be times where I know I'll be using that hundred dollar budget when I'm staying in places where like we have our escapers events and it's not on BLM land. So I'll use that budget money to pay for things like that. This expense will vary widely depending on what kind of a rig you have and how you travel. If you're the type of a person that likes to stay in RV parks and campgrounds, you'll probably greatly increase that number. If you are a person who wants to find free BLM land or national forest land or anything that's free, then $100 may be great for you, or you could budget zero if you're pretty confident that you won't be using any of those types of facilities that cost money. So the next line item is club memberships, and I put that at $4 a month, so it's just a little over, like right around 50 bucks annually. And I, again, budget that so that I have it there for when I pay the annual amount. And that one is for my escapers annual membership. So the next item is for state park passes and I budget $10 a month for that. That one is another fee that I pay annually. And generally it's just to maybe Washington state whenever I'm in that area, I like to go ahead and get their annual discover pass. Some states have this where you can get their state pass and it actually gives you some more privileges like being able to use their dump and water facilities and then also foregoing the parking fees that they might have. In Washington state, it's $10 a day to park at state parks. So the $30 annual fee that I pay is actually covered within three days and I get to use their water and sewer facilities. I know New Mexico has a pretty advantageous system as well with their state park pass. It gives you discounts to their campgrounds and you're able to use their water and sewer facilities as well. The next one is the National Park Pass. It's the America the Beautiful Pass and this is paid annually at $80. I budget it $7 a month so that when the bill comes in, I can pay it. This actually gets you into all national parks and national monuments for free. Of course, after you've paid your $80 annual fee, but because I travel so much and go into these national parks and national monuments, it was actually a cost savings for me to go ahead and pay the annual fee. All right, so the next item is groceries. Now I budget $300 a month for groceries. This is one of those costs that again is going to vary person to person and or if you travel solo or as a couple. I generally buy all organic fruits and vegetables. So my grocery costs tend to be a little bit higher because of that and I do eat in quite a bit. So I used to have a budget of $400 a month and I put myself on this goal to bring it down to $300 and I've been doing pretty well with it and still being able to eat well and buy all of the organic fruits and vegetables that I want. Next we have eating out and I have budgeted $50 a month for that. I rarely actually go out to eat and I just kind of save that for those times when I'm with either the escapers group or I'm with 
you know, friends and family and we tend to go out and do things a little bit more. So I save it for that. So next we have $148 for cell phone. I use Verizon as my carrier. So that includes my cell phone and it also includes a hotspot. And both of those are unlimited except the hotspot is throttled at I believe 15 gigs. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and purchased an additional hotspot with AT&T and that is $65 a month. And it actually serves two purposes. One, this one is unthrottled and unlimited. And if I'm in an area where Verizon is stronger than AT&T as far as a cell signal, I'll just use my Verizon or vice versa if AT&T has a stronger signal, I'll use AT&T. And sometimes that does happen. But I always need to make sure that I have an internet connection because all of my business is online. Now, there will be times where I'll go into, say, a national park or a national forest and it doesn't have an internet connection, and I'm fine with that for a couple of days. But in general, like when I'm working, I need to make sure that I have an internet connection. So I like to have the two. Obviously, if you're not a person that works online or needs an internet connection like that, you don't have to have two hotspots or any hotspots if you want. It also allows me to stream Netflix at night. So if you want Netflix, you're probably going to need a hotspot. I don't think it works really well off of your cell phone, I believe. Don't quote me on that. But I've tried it on my cell phone before, and my cell phone got really, really hot from using it as a hotspot. So I just went ahead and purchased the separate hotspot, like little jetpack. Actually, let me show you. This is what my AT&T hotspot looks like. So I just purchased this separately so I didn't have to use my cell phone. So the next line item is laundry. We all have laundry that we need to do unless you have washer and dryer inside of your RV, which I don't think most RVs have them. Some of them do, but you're looking at class A RVs that have those. There are some portable washers out there that you can put in a smaller RV, but you're using a lot of water to do that and you're gonna have to go fill up somewhere. So I decided that I just would go to a laundry mat. And interestingly, at first I was like, Ugh, I hate this. Like, I'm so used to having my own washer and dryer in my house. But what's interesting is, is if you have a lot of laundry to do, like if you have all of your clothes and then you have towels and sheets and you know, your comforter or my dog's bedding or whatever, I can literally throw all of those things into separate washers and then dry them and I'm done within an hour. I don't have to keep waiting on the load in the washer that's currently washing to be done before I put in the next load. So I get laundry done like really quick these days. So I actually like it. I budget at $10 per month for that. I sometimes go over that a little bit if I'm washing bedding very often or like just last month, Lily got really sick and she threw up all over the bed. And so I had to go wash all of the linens that I had just washed. So that cost me a little bit extra to do that as well. So the next line item is propane at $15 per month. And this one also varies depending on your RV and how much propane you consume, or even if you have propane on your RV. Some RVs don't even have propane anymore. I think the new Winnebago Revel doesn't even have propane at all. Now in the Heimer, the only thing that uses propane is the stove and the furnace and the water heater. But the water heater and the furnace actually can use either electric, propane, or a mixture of both. So I've used the water heater mostly just on propane. So a lot of times it's in the morning when I'm just trying to wash my hair and the sun's not up and it's gonna burn through some of my battery power. And so I just turn on the propane. Interestingly, I purchased the RV three months ago and the propane tank was completely full and right now it says that I still have two thirds left in my propane tank. And I turn that thing on all the time for my water heater. I don't generally use the water heater to wash dishes. I just use it to wash my hair. So I'm turning it on maybe three to four times a week, if that. So I'm surprised at how long it's lasted. So because of that, my budget is fairly low. The $15 budget is a carryover from when I had my other RV. The refrigerator actually worked off of propane and electric, but the refrigerator actually sipped the propane very slowly, so it was more cost efficient to use propane on that particular vehicle. I was putting more propane into that vehicle because of the refrigerator. And then of course in the winter months, when it was really cold outside, I would use the furnace in the morning. So I've gone ahead and left the $15 budget for now. It doesn't look like I'm going to be using that very much on the Heimer, except maybe in the winter times. but. I'm gonna wait and maybe revise my budget next year after I've gone through a whole winter in the Heimer. So I've also budgeted water at $5. Now that may seem a little bit weird, but there are places where I go to, like when I was in Quartzsite, Arizona last year, 
where it's very hard to find free water. There was actually a place there, I think it was called the pit stop, where you could actually get water. And so I would have to go there and pay for water. There are a lot of states actually that provide free water. I'm here in Washington state and a lot of the rest stops actually provide free dumping of your gray and your black tanks and free potable water. Or sometimes at the wastewater treatment plants, they also have the dumping of your gray and your black tanks and also potable water. So it just depends on where you're at and how much you'll be spending. I did notice that last year when I was on the East Coast, the free places just weren't as plentiful. So you might have to up your budget if you're on the East Coast a lot. All right, so the next line item is mail forwarding and the mailbox rental. So the so mail forwarding is budgeted at $13 per month and the mailbox rental is budgeted at $12 per month. I don't have anybody in Washington state that actually handles my mail for me. So I choose to get a mailbox rental and it's just a mail forwarding company that will receive all of your mail and then you just call them whenever you want to have your mail sent to you. So I pay an annual fee for that. And then I also pay the mail forwarding fee, which is about $13 every time they send me a package. So I generally only get my mail like once a month. I've been known to wait three months to get it. So yeah, <laughs> needless to say, I budget $13 a month for that one. This might also change a little bit because I am looking at the escapers mail service. And I think it's comparable to what I'm spending now, but I'm still researching that. The next line item is entertainment and I budgeted $200 a month for that. Now I don't always spend that one either. I really just use it when I'm around friends and family more and plus entertainment costs come in whenever I'm sightseeing and having to pay for like tours or just places in general that cost or when you're traveling to places that you just want to do some more sightseeing. There are a ton of free things to do out there, especially in the national parks and state parks. So again, I don't always use the $200, but I budget it for just in case. So my total monthly budget is $1,548 per month for all of my RV expenses. Now that doesn't include some of my personal expenses, which I do go into detail on my blog at storychasing.com. All right, everyone, that is it for my budget. I hope that really helped you to figure out what kind of a budget you can put together for yourself. And if you want more information, make sure you click that link in the description to sign up for my free mini course on budgeting. I'll give you my budget. I'll give you a budget template. I'll show you tips and tricks on how to save money in RVing. Also, I'll give you inside of my budget all of my personal costs as well that gives you a more extensive look at my budgeting, not just what I budget for RVing, but budgeting for everything, even my personal costs, so that you can figure out maybe a good budget for yourself when you go out and do traveling, whether it's in an RV or just traveling full-time anywhere. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a video. Thanks guys. Have a great day.